Let me introduce you to my newest kayak, the Vibe Seaghost 130. Uh, I apologize for the wind noise. This is the only time I can get out here and do this review. Uh, Vibe is a fairly new company. They've only been around for three years. They're based out of Atlanta, Georgia, and they distribute to local dealers around the area. Uh, I got mine from Rick's Bait and Tackle. Great people to deal with, great service. Uh, you already had one there on the floor. So I went over there and picked it up. He said, if you have any problems, give me a call. Don't hesitate. So if you're ever around the Jack's Beach area, they're right off of Beach Boulevard. So go to be sure to check them out. They got everything that store you could ever need if you ever want to go fishing. But uh, so I got, I picked mine up on a Black Friday sale at, it was $799. Normally they're priced at $899. So that already is a steal considering like, uh, let's say the Feel Free Lure uh, 13, which is around $1,400, and then you got the Old Town Predator 13, which is around the same price point. So you're already saving like $400 in order to put into mods, fish finders, and whatever else you're wanting. And as uh, we go through this kayak, you see it already comes with a bunch of upgrades that you didn't have to spend your money on that's already installed on here. So let's go ahead and let's do the review of the kayak. We'll start from the front to the back like many others, and uh, I'll give you a rundown of this thing. All right, so up here at the front, the very front, you have your drain plug. So you can stand up, drain any water that gets in here. I haven't taken this kayak out yet, but uh, everyone tells me they're very dry. So I can't wait to take it out and find out for myself, of course. Uh, instead of the old flimsy handles, you got a nice hard plastic handle up here. And then we have a paddle harness. You go ahead and slip your paddle up in there if you're fighting a fish and you need to put your paddle down real quick. And of course, uh, apart from my old kayak, it just had a rubber lid. You have a hard plastic locking lid you can store anything you want. You open it up, you got a dry bag inner liner in here that you can take out if you want. So you can add batteries or anything. And also, they give you a piece of plastic from where they drill out the back hatch. That way, if you need to do any plastic welding or repair on your kayak, it's good that you already got the same color and everything to use. Like I said, this right here just comes out. So you can just get inside the hole if you need to and uh, add a battery or you know, if you want to go camp, throw your bags up there. Just lock it right back in place. It actually pulls down and seals it. So it's just falling over and closing. You actually feel the lid pull down. And the back lid really shows it. And I'll show you that here in a little bit. But uh, we'll move on back, it's like where the console is. Okay, up here you got your storage console and more storage. Uh, these pieces right here, they do fit Scotty rod holders. So you got, as you can see, you got plenty of spaces to put Scotty rod holders, drink holster for your either coffee or an adult beverage when it's a nice hot summer day. And you got all these holes to go ahead and add your fish finders or anything else. And also you have measured to 20 inches a measuring board on this side and over here you have centimeters I think it's up to 50 centimeters lid comes off has a nice gasket right here to seal it for storage and you got all this right here it's just nice and flat so you can throw your keys wallet cell phone whichever you want in there battery if you're going to want to put a battery in there uh, also I don't think it's going to be able to pick it up there's a line or groove that runs right along here 
so you know where to cut if you wanted to take the center piece out and like store rods down inside of here for more room. And there's guys that even put hinges back here on the back and use uh, like car ramps like you use to open the trunk. So they can just pick, like, pick it up on the front and it'll just raise up out of the way. So instead of having to take the whole thing off, if you really want to secure it, you, know, you just clip it back in place. You don't want it blowing off down the road. But if it does and you forgot to clip it, you go to Vibe and they sell like these individual pieces. That's what's great. It's not like I can, you know, like I would a perception and I had to lose a cover, it's gonna cost me an arm and leg. Where if you lose this, I think on Vibe's website, and we don't quote me on, but I believe if I remember right, it's like $35. So you could have one of these set up for inshore and bass fishing, and you can have another one set up for like salt water, and you can just change it out. That's what's so cool about that. And then up here in the front, another thing that sold me on it's right here, is where your transducer goes. And you mount it on the bottom, so you can stick your wires right through there instead of having to get the duck seal and just stick it on the very bottom of the hole inside now you're actually in the water so you get an accurate water temp and uh, accurate uh, reading from underwater and of course you got clips to add whatever accessories you want and it already comes with a rail system so you can put rod holders on either side you can put if you don't want your fish finder there you want to mount it here you can stick it here you know or of course your GoPros or action cameras to film yourself like I do uh, and of course you got your foot pegs that are adjustable and then on either side you have your toe operated levers for your uh, for your rudder so you can just wear that back and forth turn yourself left and right which is so nice that it already has a rudder kit already on it you don't have to install it it's already ready good to go and uh, when we get to the back I'll put in more detail about it and then all the kayaks come with these nice scupper plugs already installed as before I had to use the old yellow foam golf balls for scupper plugs so it's pretty nice I mean it's pretty roomy uh, it's 33 inches wide and the kayak weighs 70 pounds so it's only 10 pounds more than my old uh, uh, precision pescador so I mean it's not that big I mean you're gaining an extra foot and it's only 10 pounds more so we're off to a good start already Uh, currently right now the seat is in a low position so you get a better look on these straps to hold it down if you want to go to the high position you just undo it and pick it up and slide it back and there she is now you're ready to fish now i don't know if the camera's picking it up a little bit but it slopes slightly downward uh, if you're wanting to fix that and have it more a little bit level stance what a lot of guys do is they put uh, take three quarter inch PVC and stick right in here underneath the feet kind of like the spacers have it sit up a little bit more I don't know if I've designed it that way so your feet are a little bit more down here you're a little bit lower in the kayak for paddling or that's just the way it came out when they designed it Fold it up, take it out. Have it intended right here so water will run down to here and not stay in the top. Here's the back tie downs for the seat. Also, like I said, you get a better look of uh, tackle tray storage. You can just take your terminal tackle or stuff that you use the most, like jig heads, hooks, leaders, so on. And you need to stick it right here, that way you're not reaching behind here trying to get it out of the tackle box. Nice breathable material, waterproof. I'm not worried about if I get fish blood or slime, I just wash it right off. Versus like if it you know had thick padding or foam in here, then all that salt water, fish slime, and everything, you know, no matter how much you spray it, it's still wet and this is gonna turn moldy and smell bad. Whereas this, I can just wash it right out and it's not gonna hurt anything. Okay, back here you have your rear storage. 
You have more pad eyes back here to hook items onto. Uh, you can use it to strap down a small tackle box that you can lay across here or you can tie the very end of your line of your anchor right here. You have covers for your flush mounted rod holders. That way the rain and water and splashing doesn't get up in there and fill these up. And like I said, you have your rear storage right here. So twist to open, twist to lock. I don't know if the camera picked that up or not. But you can see it actually like raise up from the suction when I open it. And this is where that big piece of plastic came from uh, that I showed you earlier for repair. You can see the seal around here on the lid. More dry storage. Vibes motto, no drama, just an adventure. And guys, I can't get over the price, like how much kayak I'm getting for how little of a price it is. I mean, this is like a $1,200 kayak and I got it for $800. Let's open up, you got your nice vibe sticker, and your receipt. There's plenty of storage, it's real easy to get inside of here. There's even foam on the inside to help with flotation. See what I was saying? I mean, they really, they really think of a lot, man. It's awesome. So once again, you know, if you want to put your car keys or something back there, or your cell phone or wallet for when the game warden shows up, it's easy to access. Same thing, turn it, you see it pulled down. Closed, nice hard plastic lid. And uh, there's also a Vibe Owners Group on Facebook. I'm going to add a link to that in the description along with Vibe's website if you have any more questions. And also uh, Rick's Bait and Tackle, the people that I got this from. So if you live in South Florida, North Florida area, you can you know hit them up on Facebook and see if you can get your own if you're impressed with it. If anything, they'll let you take it out for a test ride. All right, and like I was saying earlier, you have the rudder already installed on it. Uh, the thing is, when you get it, they have these lines that are on the rudder, really long. That way, uh, there's plenty of line for you to adjust it the way you want it. And also, a lot of things guys do, there's a spring in here that will automatically have it flip back to the stored position. A lot of guys reverse that, so that spring will always be facing downward. So it's real easy fix. There's uh, some advice on the forums about it. And then when you're storing, uh, traveling with it, you simply can put the bungee over it and keep it in place. Now when you launch in the water, don't forget you have that bungee on there. Or it's gonna be a pain in the butt to turn back around and get out to undo it once you're already paddling off. And of course, use your rear carry handle. The way this uh, deploys is you have a little string and a ball over on the right hand side and you pull that, which I'm going to show you here in just a second. You pull on that string, it'll come down and flip down. And there's a little groove where you lock the line into it so it'll hold it locked down. And then to flip it back up, all you simply do is just release the line and it'll flip back up. Like I was showing you earlier on the foot pedals, they go to these lines on either side and of course that's what works it left and right back and forth and they're designed when you let go of one it's supposed to automatically find center which I think that's pretty cool was before you had to manually do it which you still can you know if you wanted to just to be sure but it's not gonna come set up like that. Like I had to come back here and tie the knots and get everything set up with a string. Here's a demonstration I was talking about with the paddle being stored in the groove. Let me take this bungee. Uh, mine came with a paddle. It's a nice aluminum paddle if you want to. I believe they have upgrades. You got grip material right here. And on the right hand side it's raised so you can orient yourself in the dark to know if you have the paddle right side up. 
and then if you had a fish or something, put the bungee back on and there she is. Uh, back here is the little ball I was talking about. Drop the rudder down, all you do is pull on it. The rudder goes down, put it in the groove, and that's what's locked in place. When you're ready to bring it on the beach and ready to go home, all you do is just pop it up and there we go. Simple as that. Okay, underneath this plate is where your transducer mounts to. They have all these holes drilled in here to help send the frequency and the signal out easier. Uh, there's four stainless steel screws that hold it into place. I took them off already, that way I can lift it up and show you. And then right inside of here is where you would mount your actual transducer. I know they uh, fit Lowrance transducers okay because I've seen other videos and I've already mocked mine up to see if it'll fit in there okay. Uh, I know people put hummingbirds in them and I know folks that have, uh, I believe they have raymarine dragonflies in some of them. But if you have any more questions about it, like I said, I'm going to have a link below to the Vibe Kayak Owners community that's on Facebook. You can ask those guys, they're very knowledgeable, they help me out. Even before I bought this kayak, they're willing to you know, answer any questions that you have. So you know, you go ahead and a lot of guys, they'll take their extra uh, cord from the transducer and wrap it around the transducer mount and they say it doesn't affect it at all. I just wanted to give you guys a view of the bottom of the kayak. I know there's a lot of kayak review videos where they only show you the top and the other features. They never show you what the bottom of the kayak looks like. As you can see, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but you can see how shiny it is and how smooth the bottom is. So it'll be able to glide over the water very easily, I would imagine. And my old kayak, it was like someone went over it with sandpaper. So I'm really happy to see this. I, you know, I'm just so excited. I can't wait to take it out. Well guys, there's my review. I hope you find it helpful. Uh, if you have any more questions, just leave them down in the comments below. I should be having this thing out in a couple of days. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that. And I'm going to do another video once I put all my upgrades and modifications on here. And I can't say enough about the Vibe Seagulls. For a budget-minded fisherman who likes to have a lot of quality and wants those nicer things, this is definitely the kayak for you. Like I said, you're saving $400 right off the top, and if you catch the Black Friday sale they got going on until Christmas, you're saving another $100. So uh, as always, we do more in Dinsmore, guys, and we'll see you next time. Be looking out for the next video.